Hey, welcome back, options traders. Well, in a recent video, I was responding to a question from one of our traders about the bid ask spread. And in that video, I said two of the main reasons why you will see large bid ask spreads is the volume or the lack thereof and volatility. But I also said those aren't the only two factors. Illiquidity is another one. So what exactly is illiquidity and how can we measure it? Well, that's actually a fairly easy answer because we can do it with the Amahud illiquidity measure. So what's this all about? Let's go find out. And as always, before we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated and helps to promote the channel. So this mathematical formula comes to us from Yaakov Amahud, who is a professor at New York University Stern School of Business. He's an economist, finance professor, does a lot of work with market microstructures, and especially with liquidity or illiquidity. And this is a calculation that he came up with. And it's quite easy and one you can do in Excel, and I'll show you how in just a moment. So let's start with the formula. Now I'm going to try to simplify this. I'll show you the actual formula in a moment. But for the non-math people, you're going to take the daily return. And when we put that in these bars like this, it means the absolute value, which just means ignore any minus signs. So if a stock is 100 and goes to 105, that's a 5% increase. But if it goes from 100 to 95, that's a 5% decrease. In both of those cases, we're going to call it positive 5 because it moved 5%. So that's what those bars mean. It just means regardless of whether it was up or down, forget about any minus signs. And then we're going to multiply it by the dollar volume. What's the price of the stock times that day's volume? And we're going to do that for each day, let's say over a six month period or a one year period. We're going to do this calculation each day, and then we're going to divide that by the number of observations. So again, if we have, let's say 252 trading days in a year, we would divide this by 252 days. Now, for the math people, this is the one that you'll probably see in a book or a website, and they always look scarier than they are, but this Greek sigma just means sum. It means to add things up. And we're going to add things from time period one, let's call it day number one, all the way through time period n, let's call it 252 days. We're going to take the absolute value that's what we just looked at, at the return of each of those days, so at T1, T2, T3, and so on, divided by the dollar volume of each of those days. And then we're going to multiply that whole thing by 1 over N, which is the same thing as dividing by N. We're just taking the average. So for all the math people out there, if that makes it easier, that's the actual formula. So the illiquidity measure... What we're doing is we're going to find the average percentage price move for a given dollar trade. So let's say for a million dollars. Now that doesn't mean that you or I are going to be putting in trades for a million bucks, at least not most likely. But what it's showing is more for institutional traders and the big trading desks who will be putting in $10 million trades or $100 million trades. And we're trying to figure out how sensitive is this stock to having such big trades. Is it going to move the stock price a lot or a little? Sometimes you'll hear that called slippage. Now, once we get this formula down and we calculate it, we're going to find that larger values means that the stock is more illiquid. It will have a tendency to move more with larger trades, which all things being equal is a bad thing. We'd love to be able to have a stock where we can pound in a trade for 5 million or 10 million bucks, and it's just not even going to phase it. If you're selling, the bid price will absorb all of it, or if you're buying, the asking price will absorb all of it. And some stocks are like that, others aren't. Well, how would we figure it out? And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So just remember, whenever we get to the bottom with the calculations, the bigger the number, the more illiquid the stock. And of course, a more illiquid stock means that we have a larger trading cost or risk. And because of that, you will see larger bid-ask spreads. So again, this whole concept of illiquidity is something that will drive these bid-ask spreads. So even though you might not be seeing it or even conscious about it, 
the big trading desks are. And that's where the traders will start to widen out these spreads if they recognize that this stock might be illiquid. So let's jump over to an Excel spreadsheet and find out how to calculate the Amahud illiquidity measure. So now we're into an Excel spreadsheet and I've downloaded some data. I actually did this from nasdaq.com because I found out that Yahoo now charges you for it. Kind of interesting. So if you bump into that, you can get this for free off of Nasdaq's site. So today is November 8th, 2024, and I downloaded a year's worth of data. So that's going through 1110 of 2023. So we need the closing price and the opening price. We do not need the high and the low. We need the volume, and that's really it. So I'm going to use Microsoft. That's going to represent my high liquidity stock. And then I'm going to do Sezzl. So a lot of you have been following this and saw that it was up 71% on Friday. It's absolutely crazy. But does that mean that a big institutional desk can go put in an order for $100 million? Well, this is what we're going to find out. So once we have the information, I'm going to first calculate the dollar volume. And I'm going to say, what's the volume multiplied by the value of the stock? Now, of course, that begs the question, what's the value of the stock? Is it the open, high, low, close, the average? Well, you could actually do any of the above. A lot of people for this calculation will use the opening price since it hasn't yet been subjected to intraday market activity and price movements there. But take your pick. You could certainly do open, close, average, and it's probably not going to make a huge difference. But for this video, I'm going to just do the opening trade. So in column E, we're taking this volume times that price, and that's going to give me $7,184. Now you're probably thinking, hey, wait a minute, that's going to be a much bigger number. And it is and if you look, I've divided it by 10 to the 6 or 1 million. So I'm just trying to make it so that the numbers aren't so big. So this is really 7,184 million, or actually 7 point, let's call it $2 billion. So as you can see, there's a lot of money that flows through Microsoft in a day. So now let's calculate the return, which is column F. And I'm going to take the closing price divided by the opening price, and then we're going to subtract off one, because if I just take the close divided by the open, I'm going to get one point something. It's called a price relative. I just want the percentage. And then notice that this formula in Excel, ABS, means to take the absolute value. So this is where it's going to ignore the minus sign. So the return on that day was 0 0.0065 or 0.65%. So think about what this is telling you. The stock moved 0.65%, a little over a half a percent. Now, again, we don't know if that's up or down. We'd have to look at the difference between the open and the close. So it went from 425 down to 422. So it actually fell 0.65%. But again, forgetting the direction, it was a change of 0.65%. But it took $7.2 billion dollars to be pumped into that stock to get any kind of movement out of it. Now notice a general trend if we go to something like 22.4 billion, look at how much bigger that return is, 0.02, much bigger than 0.0065. So you can see that in general, here's one of 10.6 billion, we got again 0.02. So as more and more money flows into Microsoft, or any stock for that matter, we tend to get bigger price changes. And that's really what this is showing. Now over here, the final step in the calculation is to say, let's take the return divided by the dollar volume. And that's going to give us some numbers. Now, just notice here, it looks like we've got to go out more decimals because there we go. You can see lots and lots of decimals, not a very big impact. Okay, so relatively speaking, small percentage changes in the stock but it can handle lots and lots of volume. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing for Sezzle. So if you know how to work Excel, you can just copy those formulas over. And then we're going to come down to the bottom 
and I'm simply going to take the average of this column. Remember, that's what the formula said. Take, in this case, F divided by E for each row, add them up, that was the big Greek letter sigma, add them up, and then divide by the number of terms. So we come up with 0.0001% is the average. Now remember, we divided these numbers in millions. So each dollar volume here is really 1 million bucks. So now if we take $1 million and we multiply by the average percent move, and look at this, we get 0 0.94. It's 94 cents. But now let's do the same thing for Sezzle. Look over here, look at this percentage difference, 3.5% compared to one ten thousandths of a percent. That's a massive difference. And so if you put in a $1 million trade into Sezzle, you are expected to lose, get this, $35,000 just from slippage. Now, if you go up to, let's say, a $5 million trade, look at that, 23 bucks, 24 bucks in Microsoft, $875,000 in Sezzle. So you can see that, yes, this is a much riskier stock to trade or for the market makers, and if they get hit with a big trade, it can cause really big losses. So to guard against that and potential time that it might take for them to hedge these trades, yes, they're going to widen out the bid-ask spreads. So I thought that might be just kind of an interesting way to show you more of a behind-the-scenes look. Again, it goes into this category called market microstructures and things that financial professionals and economists look at to try to get a handle on market efficiency or liquidity, or in this case, the lack of liquidity. So that's the Amahud illiquidity measure. Now you know how to do it in Excel. And if you don't bother doing it in Excel, but you just happen to see maybe a high volatility stock and it has relatively low volume, then you can imagine that the illiquidity measure is another factor affecting that bid-ask spread. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a Candlesticks and Technical Analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.